On week seven, I got a matching tattoo, my very first tattoo with a total stranger. And it has easily been the most scenic week of the entire journey so far. Welcome to the week seven recap. As always, let's start out with the states that I've been to in the past week. I have been to New Mexico, where I started, up to Colorado, up to Wyoming, down through Utah, and right now I'm beginning in Arizona. In the past week, I have talked to 80 people, bringing our grand total of this journey so far at the end of week seven to 602. 602 strangers have given me a piece of life advice and I photographed them on my 50 year old film camera, which I'm shooting black and white film on and I've only seen 12 of the 602 photos that I've taken so far, just to make sure that the photos are coming out and that the camera's working. And they are, here's that collage again, which I showed in last week's recap. But the other 590 photos that I've taken so far, I haven't seen. And I won't see them until I'm done with the journey and have the chance to develop all of that film. By the way, the reason why I'm wearing this sleeve here is because this is where I got my tattoo and I'm covering it up from the sun because I'm in the sun all day and I don't want to get sunburn on my fresh tattoo. For this week's recap, unlike other ones, I'm actually gonna break it down by day because so much happened on every single day. I don't even know how long this recap is gonna be, but let's start with Sunday of last week. Sunday was really all about New Mexico's beauty. In the morning, after I recorded last week's recap video, I was driving along uh, I can't remember which road it was and I look to my right and I see just people jumping on their dirt bikes in this massive dirt pit and I was like I've never seen that before you know I was born and raised in Ohio grew up in Columbus Ohio and then now live in Chicago you don't see people riding dirt bikes doing jumps in a giant dirt pit so I turn around and I go over there and you know the lady who's who's charging 10 bucks to get in it asked me like you know you here to see anybody in particular and I was like actually I don't even know why I'm here and then I of course gave her the spiel she was my first stranger there but I go around and start talking to people and learned a lot about motocross and here are some clips from that some photos it was really really interesting and I had some amazing conversations I didn't really know what to expect from the people who were there and they were all extremely kind to me I think there were two really standout interactions there one of them was with, was with a group of guys and I kind of asked them about uh, You know why they got into motocross and they start telling me about how for them and for a lot of other people Motocross is a way out from a life of drugs and crime they, the, His exact quote was if you've got enough money to do both motocross and drugs you're a badass, <laughs> which we all laughed about. But he was kind of serious. Another guy goes, I'd rather spend 10 grand to fix up my bike or improve it than to spend 10 grand, you know, going to the clubs, doing drugs, getting involved in whatever crime. He goes, this is so much more worth it. And the second standout interaction there was actually a really sad one. If, if, if you are triggered by suicide, skip the next minute or so. I talked to a 13 year old kid and I never approached kids and I didn't in this case either. I approached his dad and, and his dad was like, nope, he's gonna be the spokesperson. And so I asked him, you know, what do you know now that you wish he knew earlier? And his advice for himself was just so simple. And it was enjoy every moment. Right, and, I've, and he's been one of a few others who have phrased it exactly in that way and have made it that short. You know, when people give me short pieces of advice, I ask them to, you know, how'd you figure that out? And when I asked him that, he said, well, actually one of my friends recently took his own life. And that started to make me think about how much I should enjoy every single moment. And when he said that, oh, I was heartbroken. I mean, he's 13 years old. That advice carries so much weight that you wouldn't fully understand without asking that follow-up question. It's generally good advice to enjoy every moment, but for someone who's 13 years old and is saying that because their friend took their own life recently, that is a whole other thing. So touched and heartbroken by that interaction there. The rest of Sunday was just spent driving through New Mexico and I could talk a lot more about any of the days I'm gonna talk about. I'm just choosing a few small highlights, uh, but New Mexico is just gorgeous. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed the drive through it. Let's talk about Monday. Monday, my objective was basically to get from New Mexico to near Boulder, Colorado, where I had a hotel. Uh, you know, what ended up happening was I got stuck on the highway for two hours because maybe a couple hundred feet ahead of me, somebody's 
RV trailer completely tipped over, blocking the entire highway, and nobody got hurt. But because of that, nobody could even go around. There was there was literally no way to go around. We couldn't even turn around and follow some other route. There was no way to get forward. So we had to wait in traffic for two hours. I talked to a couple strangers there. It was fine. And again, nobody was hurt. So thank goodness it could have been really, really bad. But Monday is where I met a guy named Don. Don Caskey in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And the way it happened is that one of the strangers I talked to said, wow, you're the second person who has approached me in like the last few minutes saying, hey, I'm going around talking to strangers. So I was like, oh my God, there's an Imran imposter going around. I got to meet him. She tells me about how this guy is, is full of tattoos and it has terminal cancer. So he's going around getting matching tattoos with strangers. And I was like, okay, I definitely have to meet this guy anyway. I wander around for a little bit longer. At a certain point, I get my 12th person uh, of my camera roll. And by the way, my camera, that 50-year-old one, only takes 12 photos at a time before you have to switch the roll. So I wrapped up my roll in some gift shop and in comes this guy and he goes, you doing a documentary? And I was like, I mean, I kinda, sorta, I don't know. And it's Don, it's Don Caskey, this guy covered in tattoos and we start talking and everything. And I was like, ah, oh, man, you know, I just ran out of film and my car's somewhere over there and I don't have an extra roll with, roll with me. I guess it's just not meant to be. But we talked and it was, you know, I asked him about his story. I thought he was so cool. And I go back to my car and I start getting ready to continue going up north to my hotel and as I'm sitting in my car kind of planning out my route and figuring out what to do and also contemplating the fact that I haven't showered in like three and a half days I uh, I see Don walk by again and I was like I get out of my car I'm like wait wait wait, wait. I was like well, I'm gonna reload a roll of film right now I'm gonna ask him my big life question I'd love to get your advice and take your photo on my old camera and he's like sure let's do it so I do so I do that I load up a new roll and then he gives me his life advice I, I get I actually have a recording of it which I'll post on TikTok so, soon and after he gives me his advice you know we're talking a little bit longer and then I was like you know Don I've never gotten a tattoo before. Should should we do it? He goes, yeah, let's do it, man. And and uh, he goes, I don't think there's any tattoo shots to open right now, but we can make an appointment if you're going to still be here tomorrow. I said, sounds good. We exchanged numbers. I went on my way, got to my hotel, and Don and I figured it out. And I'm going to talk about that whole experience in a second because that's a whole other thing. But yeah, Monday, I get to my hotel, shower, decompress. Great. Let's talk about it. Tuesday. So Tuesday is the day that I'm supposed to go get this tattoo with Don. He's searching around Colorado Springs, which by the way, I was about an hour and a half away from. So he, he was looking around at different tattoo shops, trying to find a walk-in appointment. Couldn't find anything until noon for Wednesday. And I said, actually, I just extended my hotel stay by another day so that I can enjoy Colorado. It's perfect. Before I leave, I'll meet you up at this tattoo shop. We're going to get our matching tattoo. So Tuesday ended up just being me doing the peak to peak drive, which was on real. I mean, it, it's supposed to take about two hours, and I think I spent four or five hours doing it, just making frequent stops, enjoying the beauty. Here are some of those photos and videos of it. Just, ah, I mean, gorgeous. I was, I was really living in the moment, really appreciating beauty and nature, and I could talk so much more about it. But after that peak to peak drive, I met up with one of my TikTok friends, Sophia, who I'd never met in person before, but I knew lived in Denver, and we got some drinks, and it was great. She was amazing, like new best friend for sure. And so that was really wholesome. Them. That whole day was completely unplanned, right? I didn't even know the peak to peak drive was a thing. Sophia and I were, weren't supposed to get drinks until I think the next day or something like that. And she happened to be free that evening. So all worked out. Tuesday was a great day. Now let's talk about Wednesday, tattoo day. And then I'm going to show you my tattoo. Wednesday is tattoo day. So I check out of my hotel and I start making the hour and a half drive down to Colorado Springs. And I show up at this tattoo shop and there's Don and, and then I meet our tattoo artist. He goes by Richie Billion. And Richie was like the coolest, coolest guy. Just like, he has such a crazy story. I'm not going to share the details of it because I actually don't know how much of it he would like anybody to know but he told me a lot about his life and he used to be a graffiti artist which I can say and he is a really good graffiti artist like when I was in middle school I learned a lot about graffiti and learned how to draw a little bit but never did anything crazy this guy was like full-on real graffiti artist and he showed me a ton of his photos of that truly truly an artist and once I saw that I was like okay I am in really good hands here now the way Don does matching tattoos with strangers and by the way I'm gonna make a whole other video properly explaining who Don is why I got my matching tattoo with him but he lets the people choose does not matter what it is he is up for anything because like I said he is he has terminal cancer the man is going to die of cancer eventually. It's a really sad thought, but he is making the most of it. What he says is, is I can't take this body with me 
I can't take anything with me, but I can make memories. So I'm thinking about it. I'm like, whatever tattoo I get, it's going to remind me of Don. But whatever he gets, because it's going to be a matching one, it has to remind him of me. And I'd like it to be something that's at least significant to this trip. Because let me tell you, a few years ago, I would not have gotten a matching tattoo with a stranger. Wouldn't even have been a thought. So I thought, because I had to reload a new roll of film to get him and his photo and his advice, I think the tattoo should be this, a roll of 120 film. And 120 film has been used for the past 100 years. This specific type, T-Max 400, has only been around for about 40, but I thought that's perfect. It's, it, it is representative of the journey I'm on because this is the film I'm using to photograph all the strangers I talk to. And it's gonna remind Don of me. I guarantee nobody else is gonna have a tattoo of a 120 roll of film and sure enough, I was the first one to say, hey, let's get a roll of film as matching tattoo. So Don gets a small version of his tattoo on his right knee, and I get it on my forearm, which let me show you real quick. <laughs> I see. I see. I try not to laugh yeah, too hard. You know? I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There it is. My fresh tattoo still covered by Saniderm, which is gonna help it heal. If you don't know, tattoos are considered an open wound, right? Because it is a needle that creates the tattoo. So that's why I've got it covered up, because again, I'm outside all day and you do not want to get sunburn on a new tattoo, from what I understand. Again, it's my first tattoo, so I'm learning. But I love the way my tattoo turned out. I mean, like when I look down at it when I'm not wearing my sleeve, I just think, yeah, that's supposed to be there. That looks like it, it looks like I was born with that. And my God, like I said, Richie Billion, an artist. Follow him on Instagram. I think it's Richie underscore Billion. I'll put the at right here. That guy is awesome. I can't wait to come back to Colorado Springs and get future tattoos with him. But like I said, I'll make a whole other video kind of explaining more of Don's story, more of why I wanted to get my first tattoo with, as a matching one with a stranger. Again, something I would have never done a few years ago. It's something that was easy for me to do this time, but to end that story, I got a matching tattoo as my first tattoo with a total stranger who I met in Colorado Springs. Things I just would not have expected when I started this journey seven weeks ago. Now let's talk about Thursday. Now Thursday morning I wanted to go edit some of the photos and see them on a larger screen, so I find a coffee shop in Cheyenne, Wyoming. It's called the Crooked Cup. Turns out it was like just the best decision for whatever reason. You know, this wasn't along a highway or anything. For whatever reason, it ended up being kind of a traveler's cafe. I met so many people. I think I met a couple who was from Oregon and driving across the country, another couple who was from Maine and driving across the country. Both of them were also motorcyclists. And one of them, named Jeff, here's a selfie with him, gave me 200 bucks cash. He heard about what I was doing. He, he, he learned that I sleep at rest areas in the front seat of my car. He goes, here, this is straight from the heart, man. Just use this to get a hotel. <laughs> Again, things that I didn't expect when I started this journey seven weeks ago. I did not expect strangers to give me money for a hotel to be so kind and sympathetic to my situation. Like, that is just unreal. Jeff, if you're seeing this, it was so wonderful to meet you and your wife. And Thank you for giving me $200 to stay in a hotel. And also on Thursday, I just decided that I knew I had to go west. I wanted to take the slower, more scenic route. And so I ended up driving through something called Medicine Bow Forest. Drove right through the mountains. And once again, just pure beauty. Like the peak to peak drive in Colorado was unreal. And then whatever drive through the Medicine Bow Forest was just, it, it matched it in its own unique ways as far as beauty goes. And the weather on the ground was something like 80 to 90 degrees. And then once I got into the mountains, it was more like 50. So I put on a jacket for the first time since I was in like Maine at the beginning of my journey. And I met a bunch of strangers there. They were super kind. I took a photo next to a sign that said the elevation was like almost 11,000 feet. It's out of breath as I was talking to these strangers, just saying one sentence. I gave my spiel and I was like, and, uh, and what I usually ask is, um, Oh, what do you know now that you wish you knew earlier? Like, like breathing like that. <laughs> it was insane. So uh, it was beautiful, totally worth it. And, and again, like it really teaches and reinforces the idea for me that sometimes it's better not to be on time or to have a schedule. It's better to just enjoy the experience, to take the slow route, to take the roads, literally, literally to take the roads less traveled because you never know what kind of beauty you're gonna stumble across. Now I spent most of 
Friday actually really upset and really angry, which was the first day that I felt that, and it had nothing to do with my trip and everything to do with the fact that the U.S. Supreme Court repealed Roe v. Wade. Now, listen very close. I can make this a whole other video, and I'm just going to keep it quick. No matter what you believe about abortions, about when life begins, banning abortions doesn't stop them from happening. It just makes the abortions that happen way less safe. There are proven ways to reduce abortions. If that's your real problem, you don't want people to get abortions, there are proven ways to do it, and it's sex education, access to contraception, uh, you know, universal health care, maternal or paternal leave. Those things are actual things that reduce abortions. So if that's really your issue, banning abortion is literally the worst way you can solve that issue of yours. So I'm furious because it's so much more than that. It's also just about nobody should be able to tell women what to do with their bodies. The same way that nobody tells men what to do with theirs. So again, I could go on and on and on and on about that, but I'd spent all of Friday just thinking about that, being upset about it, being angry about it, and... Oh, hi, yeah, I'm just gonna stop there for now. I will say I was bummed that I wasn't gonna be able to be with my Chicago community or Columbus community to protest, but I found the protest in Salt Lake City, Utah and joined all of them. I was just honored to be a part of their community. Uh, Utah is an extremely red state. I believe Salt Lake City is a, a blue area, but again, I was I was just so glad I could be a part of it, just to make my voice heard. Now, before I went to the protest, I actually went to a motorcycle shop because if you saw, a few weeks ago, I learned how to ride a motorcycle for the first time, and now I'm hooked. Like, I'm gonna get a motorcycle when I return from my journey. And so I wanted to see the one that I've been eyeballing, actually for years now. It's a Royal Enfield, and that's the company that I, I am like attracted to. They're made in India, and I think that's that's cool that it would get back to my, my heritage. But I wanted to see one in person, so I go to this motorcycle store and I meet this guy named Marshall. Now, Marshall ends up being this really nice guy. He has me sit on the bike and you know get a feel for it and all that. I didn't get to ride it because I don't have my motorcycle license. But after a little bit of talking, Marshall goes, so you stay in rest areas overnight in your car? And I was like, yep. And he goes, you should come stay with me and my wife. We've got plenty of extra space. We'd love to host you for a night so you don't have to sleep in your car. I said, that would be amazing. Again, things I didn't expect when I started my journey seven weeks ago for strangers to just say, you know what, you should come stay with me after like, I don't know, 15 minutes of interaction. So I go to his place after the protest and everything and, uh, you know, we're chatting, I'm getting to know him and his wife, Deanna, and, uh, you know, Marshall's telling me about how much he loves to travel on his motorcycle and he's got this huge, you know, I don't even know what to call it. He's got this huge motorcycle where he can like sling bags over it, take a tent and all that stuff and just go. And they can handle long stretches of travel, being comfortable and all of that. And, um, you know, he's telling me about all these trips he's taken, showing me photos, and I love seeing that and hearing about it. And we're, we're geeking out about, you know, how I've, for a lot of my journey, I've used the Avoid Highways feature on Google Maps so that I can see the beauty and drive through the mountains, up the mountains, down the mountains, whatever. You know, get the get the real experience of the states that I'm in. And he does the same thing with his motorcycle. And so we're geeking out about that. And then he's telling me about how he was in an accident on a motorcycle a few years ago, which left his left arm limp. Now he's, over the last two years, he's been regaining strength. He still has like the grip strength, so he can still ride. Uh, it's just a little bit more challenging to do other things that we take for granted day to day. Super nice guy, new lifelong friend, him and Deanna both. Beautiful home too, and I slept really well. So Marshall and Deanna, if you're seeing this, thank you so much for hosting me and for becoming new lifelong friends. Can't wait to see you again soon. And finally, Saturday, which was yesterday at this point, I went to the Salt Lake City Farmer's Market downtown, met a bunch of interesting people there. A stranger gave me a pistachio donut for free. Her name's Candy. Here's her, her company. And if you're ever in Salt Lake City, totally support her. She was super kind, had great advice, and yeah, we love supporting small and local business. In addition to that, on Saturday, I just did a long, scenic drive from Salt Lake City south towards the Utah border. That was like six hours of driving along the mountains, through the mountains, up the mountains, down the mountains. Like It was unreal. At every moment of almost every minute, I was just like, wow, look around me. I mean, it, this is... This has been like the mental simulation I've been getting. I'm gonna step aside. This has been like the mental simulation I've been getting for the last week. Things like this. Which, by the way, 
I am experiencing for the first time in my life. I've never seen these areas before. So it's extra special because of that. Now, as far as challenges go, I'd say there's only two real big ones. The first one just being that I'm driving a lot, literally from last Sunday to yesterday, Saturday, I drove a total of 1,770 miles. So that combined with talking to strangers, making sure I'm keeping track of my information, sitting down at coffee shops and editing photos and videos, updating the Patreon, all of that, that, all of that combined, the driving is pretty intense. But again, gorgeous. Like if there's ever a place that I'm gonna drive almost 2,000 miles in a week, it, it's, you know, it's New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah. And the other challenge is being extremely angry about the Roe v. Wade repeal again just insane that in 2022 we're still letting old men tell women what to do with their bodies it, it, it's just uh, again there's so much more i could say about it that i'll save that for something else if you've made it this far thank you so much for keeping up for watching for supporting me and you know week seven was just easily like i said the most scenic week and then full of amazing surprises also one terrible surprise again roe v wade week eight's gonna look a little bit different i'm actually flying back to columbus ohio for one of my best friend's weddings so i'm flying back in the middle of the week i'll be there for a few days through the weekend then i'll come back to wherever my car is and i'll continue the journey from there because love is totally worth it <laughs> and so is so is friendship so i can't wait for the wedding i i am super pumped but it'll also be a nice little break i'll get to see my cats and yeah, and then I'll come back and, and wrap up the journey over the next few weeks. So I'll see you in the week eight update, which is going to look a little different. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for supporting, and I'll see you in the next one.